In this video I'm going to show you how to set up the Linux subsystem for Windows. And this is a kind of an optional step. In the uh, videos of the, my courses you will see me using the command line sometimes. I typically am working from uh, Mac OS or OS X depending on your preference. And this is a bash uh, shell, so bash shell, and this is the same under uh, Macs as it is under Linux. So bash has been around for eons. I think since the 70s. Somebody can fact check me on that if you want, but Bash has been around for a very long time. I've been using Bash for uh, since the early days of my IT career, which was some time ago. And I'm going to show you how to set this up within Windows. So uh, the Windows uh, guys have actually done something pretty interesting here, the Windows team, I should say. Um, it's not, it, I did some reading about how they did it. It's actually, they're calling it a subsystem. It is not in a virtual machine. It is not in a container. Um, I forget exactly how they termed it, but you are getting a, uh, an instance of Ubuntu or Linux running uh, within your system. And so the installation process for Java development is twofold. One, we need to go in and set up the Linux subsystem and get a version of Linux installed. I'm going to show you how to use Ubuntu to get that installed and running and how to get to the uh, Linux environment there. You're actually running within, it's kind of a VM. Um, but that is a separate system. And then there's a second step to go in and install Java. It might be a little confusing because you have Java installed under Windows. The JVM is set up there, but now you're going to be in the subsystem. So you might have Windows here. Now you're in a subsystem that is running Linux. And with that, that Linux environment, we also need to give that Linux environment access to the Java tool. So that is a separate installation step. And I'll show you how to do that after we get the Linux installed the Linux subsystem installed. I'll do that now. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. So we want to come down to the search bar and search for PowerShell. And here you can see the app is up. You might have to click on the arrow to expand it out. And we want to run this as administrator. So that's important. You can't just run it normally. You need to run it as administrator. And we will say yes. And now from the command line, what we want to type is the command Windows, Windows optional feature minus on line minus feature name, Microsoft Windows subsystem dash Linux, like so. So it's going to be enable Windows optional feature online or dash online dash feature name Microsoft Windows subsystem Linux. And that's going to take a moment for it to download. So once it goes through the download process, you're going to get this prompt that you need to restart the system. And we just want to say yes. The default is yes and hit enter. And I will come back once Windows has restarted. Now, once your system is restarted, uh, everything is installed to enable that subsystem for Linux, but we want to come in here and verify your build. So come to, to system and we want to do the system information app and you want to look at your build number. So I have 17763 and you must be 16215 or higher. So if you have a build number lower than 16215, you're going to need to update Windows to continue with the instructions in this tutorial. So the next thing you want to do is open up the Microsoft Store and just click on that. And I'm going to come up to search. And I'm going to search on Ubuntu. And I'm going to click on that for the app. Now there are several different flavors of Linux available. If you wanted to use SUSE or Debian, those are also available. In this video, I'm just going to go through and uh, install this. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say install. Click on the install button. And it is actually asking me to sign into Microsoft. I do not have an account with Microsoft, but it is gonna go through the process of installing anyway. So I'm just gonna uh, close that. And you can see here, it is actually downloading in the background. So that little sign in is a little misleading. You really don't need to have a Microsoft Store app. Uh, if you do, you're more than welcome to sign in. I do not have one, and it is not needed to complete the installation. So you can see now Ubuntu just got installed. I got a notification down on the bottom. I can close out the Microsoft Store, 
And now to see Ubuntu, I just come up here and click on Ubuntu. And it's going to take a second to go ahead and complete the installation. So you can see here, it is asking you to enter in a new Unix username. And I'm just going to use my initials of JT and hit enter. Now it's asking me for a password. I'm going to provide it a password. Confirmation of the password. And now we can see that this is installed uh, correctly. So let me just do an LS here, PWD. So now you can see that I'm in my home directory, uh, all installed. And that pause at first where it's doing the installation, that is just a one-time setup where it's going through initializing the Ubuntu environment. Uh, if I, I think I can click exit here, or just say exit. So that exits the application. The next time that I want to run Ubuntu or get to a bash shell, I can just say here, and now I am at uh, a bash shell. And then just as an alternative, this is one way to get to the bash shell is just by coming up here, clicking and saying Ubuntu. If I happen to be in the command line, so if I'm using the command prompt, here, if I'm just in, in that and I want to get to a bash shell or in the directory that I am, I can just do uh, the command bash and hit enter. And you can see now I am actually running a bash shell. And I can say ls, pwd. And I have all the normal uh, bash shell commands that come with the Ubuntu environment. At this point, uh, Ubuntu is now installed under the Windows Linux subsystem and available for use. So you have complete access to Ubuntu and some of the features of Ubuntu, such as uh, Git, uh, SSH, and some of the tools that typically do not come with a Windows environment. This is a real handy way to get up and going with a Bash shell. Uh, previously, in uh, previous versions of Windows, uh, you had to use uh, several different utilities to get uh, Linux-like features. This is actually integrated into the Windows operating system, so it gives you a much better development experience than uh, developing on just Windows itself when you're used to Bash shell and Linux environments. So that ha now has the Linux subsystem installed on your system. The next step is we need to get Java installed for the Linux subsystem. So it's a separate installation step, even though, again, we do have Java installed for Windows itself. We are running in a subsystem that does not have Java installed. So we need to go through a quick installation step to get Java set up and installed running for the Linux subsystem of Windows 10. So now that we have the Linux subsystem installed, there's actually a couple different ways that we can get to it. Just to recap, we can come up here, click on Ubuntu, and this is going to take us into a command prompt. And this is actually running within the, the Linux subsystem. And you can see here, if I do Java, we are saying Java's not found. Now, if I come up here and get to the Windows command line, and this should work under PowerShell as well. Uh, let's see here, we'll come up here, and if I do Java like so, we can see that I'm getting a much different error message. We can see that the Java executable is being found if, because if I do version, we will get a response. So you can see there that I have Java 11 installed. So here under this, I'm gonna go ahead and install using sudo apt. So this is the Linux installer and, and you can see that it's actually telling me exactly what I need to install. So I'm just gonna follow that command and this will set up the OpenJDK version. So remember, under the Windows operating system, we installed the Oracle version. Here, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the OpenJDK. So I'm gonna say sudo apt install, and we'll say OpenJDK dash 11 minus JRE, and we will do headless. And headless means that uh, the system only has it doesn't have a, a monitor or a video card or anything like that. So it's only expecting to be run in a server type mode. So again, that command is sudo apt install openjdk-11-jre. And actually, I want jdk. So I'm going to back that up, say jdk, and say headless. Now it's asking for my password. And you can see it, that it goes through there and it's going through scanning what it needs and it's telling me that it's gonna consume 378 meg of additional disk. And I'm gonna say yes and hit enter. And now it's going through 
downloading it and installing it. And now it, it's saying that it failed. So here I want to do sudo run app get update. I'm sorry, sudo app get update. And now I can, I'm just setting the up arrow to go back through and I'm going to go ahead and install that and say yes. And now after I ran the update, you can see that now it is downloading the JDK 11 uh, headless. And we're seeing a, a little bit of uh, different result here as it's going through installing the various packages. And this is all for the, the Linux environment that is installing a number of libraries and whatnot that it needs for uh, not only the JRE, which is a Java runtime, but also the JDK, which is the Java development kit for OpenJDK. And the speed of this installation is going to vary based on the speed of your internet connection as well as your system. And now you can see this is completely installed. And now if I do which Java... We can see that it's coming back to user bin Java, and I can issue the command Java version, and that tells me that the Open JDK, and this is the uh, JVM Java runtime, and if I do which Java C, that tells me the Java compiler. You can see that I have the Java compiler, and I can say Java C version like so. And that's going to give me back the Java compiler version. So the second step tells me that the Java JDK has been installed on the system. So at this point, now I have the Oracle Java installed under Windows 10, under the Windows 10 operating system. And within the Linux subsystem, I have OpenJDK installed for the Java development kit version.